What's up guys? It's Brad at Yamaha Marine Center. So, I have a client, calls me, says, I want a center console. And I said, okay, that's great. What do you mean center console? Because we have several different varieties of center console. And depending on where you are regionally, it could mean something completely different. So, we need to go ahead and determine how we're gonna use a boat. So if it's gonna be offshore, we might be a little bit more geared toward this guy over here. If it's gonna be near shore, some offshore, some inshore, you might be a little bit better geared toward this guy right here. And if it's going to be mostly inshore, very little offshore, you might be something like this guy right here. So, center console, very generic term. Make sure you clarify what you're talking about. And then we'll start going over some details of the Crevel 33 CSF Coastal Sport Fish the Key West 239 FS Family Sportsman and the Key West 230 Bay Reef. Not that these boats are the same even quality build or I, I don't know how to say that because they're all built for their intended purpose where that Crevel is made to be offshore in the ocean. Uh, the Key West is more like I said a nearshore, offshore, inshore variety boats. So we'll, we'll really dig in and go over uh, the rest of the details here shortly. All right so the 2023 Crevel 33 CSF. We got 33 feet, 2 inches overall, 10 foot 6 on the beam, 20 degree dead rise. But don't let that fool you because you can see the front of the boat has a much steeper dead rise than what the back of the boat has, which the dead rise is always measured in the back of the boat. Um, and that's a big difference. Uh, this boat can have up to 900 horsepower, has a 20 to 22 degree or 20 to 22 inch draft, 30 gallons of fresh water, 300 gallons of fuel, and a 14 gallon waste tank. The weight on the boat's about 8,000 pounds with no engine, so about 9,000 pounds. Um, MSRP 501,555, as this one is rigged with the Yamaha 300s. Um, we'll just quickly go over some features, I guess, and show them what we got on the boat. Uh, through stem windlass, so it's an electric motor. Um, big lifting strikes on the bottom of the boat to help get it out of the water. Uh, pretty aggressive reverse chime, kind of like uh, all of our other offshore boats keep the spray down because you can see there's not a ton of flare on the boat there's enough on there to get the job done we have a huge hard top a lot of lights dive door on the side of the boat as well as aft entry so there's a separate ladder that stows inside the boat for this big trim tabs awesome underwater lights we have a transom mount fully functional transducer twin Yamaha 300s with uh, external electronic steering is what we call the Master EX stuff. Um, you can really see that dead rise down there. It is kind of a flat pad, but it's still a 20 degree dead rise at the back of the boat. Um, let's hop up. It's kind of cool, all the fancy stuff they put on the boat. We got this garlic ladder that stows inside the boat, so it's not exposed. But if you need to quit recording and climb up, just hit the button, electronics, uh, digital switching, really cool fit and finish. Like this new material they're using, uh, it's not a still leather, but it kind of feels the same. Uh, pull out cooler, you can use this as like an aft facing uh, trolling seat. You got rocket launchers everywhere. We have this uh, sure shade that integrates into the hard top. Nice big cockpit, especially with everything folded away. Of course, there's a lock on here that I don't know about. So big cockpit, folding transom seat, uh, pressurized live wells, so you can run these full so your bait's not going to slosh around, uh, they drain overboard into the splash well. LED lights on there, you have a little <coughs> sink, tackle center in the back, speakers everywhere, fish boxes, macer macerated fish boxes on the floor. Really cool setup. We just got this boat, so I'm not very familiar with it. Um, some other innovations that Crevel's doing. They have an integrated shower up here, freshwater shower. All the lights, like I said, digital switching, which is above my pay grade. Don't know how to work it very well, but you control most all of your lights through your garments. And then we have a five inch garment that's a dedicated Yamaha screen, or we can turn it into uh, sonar, chart water, full function 
tilt, electronic steering, electronic throttles, full Hellmaster EX. Um, it is the key fob system. Uh, Garmin VHF 315. Nice big windshield for weather protection with the vent. You get some airflow. Uh, we have a wireless cell phone charger in the dash up there. Storage in all the gunnels. They have a very good use of space. All this is storage here. Big head with a holding tank. And then for all the ladies out there, we got a lot of good seating space up here. The cushions are stowed inside the head right now. <clears throat> you have a little settee with another live well here. And then we got some more storage here. Storage under the forward seats. Um, we do have a filler that goes in here, so this can be one big casting deck or one big cushion. Storage underneath, more storage in the floor. Places to put all kinds of stuff. But, again, everything is about intention, how you plan to use the boat. This is kind of a family-friendly fishing boat. Um, another thing I like to point out is the, the height of the gunnels, how tall this is. I'm like 6'7", so <laughs> this gunnel wall is like huge. Actually, I'm 5'7", so it's still big, but nice and safe. Keep the kids inside the boat. Built to be offshore, it's going to keep the spray down. going to be a comfortable ride. Um, Pretty fancy boat. A lot of bells and whistles on this one, where some of the other brands out there, like our regulators, still have a lot of these features, but they're a little less uh, in your face. I don't know how you'd say that. What's a good word, Dalvin? This is pretty fancy. Yeah. Um, but now we can kind of go over and show you the difference from a dedicated offshore boat into something like a Key West that's made more for near shore, inshore, and a little bit of offshore duty. Right. My help left, but we can still go over this together. Just me and you. On to the uh, multi-purpose boat. Not that the Crevelle isn't a multi-purpose boat. And that's what's so difficult, is try to figure out how you're going to use the boat. Like, what are we going to do with this thing? Am I going to be offshore a lot and justify the price of something like that Crevelle? Or are we going to be mostly inshore, near shore, occasionally offshore, and we're going to be at sandbars and kind of cruising around most of the time. So something like this Key West, 230F, 239FS would be perfect for us because you still have a nice steep entry on the boat but if you kind of rewind and check it against that Crevel, you can see the Crevel it starts their angle you know higher on the boat and it's more aggressive it just is really designed to be in the ocean and cutting through all the waves but as far as the way the flare progresses up the boat pretty similar just scaled down and then you still have really aggressive lifting strikes to help this thing pop up out of the water and then still have a nice reverse chime. But this chime you can see is flatter than what was on the Crevel, which carries a much steeper angle um, all the way through the boat. And this one flattens out pretty good towards the back. So it's not going to bite the water quite as much, especially if you're you know, banking. Um, you might get a little bit of chime walk out of this boat. Probably not, uh, more so on something like we'll go over last, like a bay boat, uh, which is a lot flatter, a lot less dead rise. So all this stuff combines to just make it a great all-around running boat. Not something you're going to want to spend days in the ocean, um, although people do. You know, um, this boat is uh, 23 feet 9 inches. That's not including the engine, so the engine adds a little bit more. So if you got storage constraints or something, uh, it is 8 foot 6 on the beam. It's about 2,700 pounds. So you can see it's about a quarter of the weight of something that's intended to be offshore. So that's really what I tell a lot of people is even though Crevel puts, you know, does a great job of putting bells and whistles on it, you'll see there's a little less on, on a mid-range boat like this. Um, but what really costs the most money is the material in the hulls, decks, the fiberglass, the resin they use, the gel coats they use. Is where most of the money is spent on those those uh, big offshore boats like the pursuits regulators um, CVs some other brands we don't carry um, but you know is what it is like I said figure out how you're gonna use it and that'll be your guide uh, we this comes standard with trim tabs uh, we didn't do underwater lights on this one the Yamaha 250 because the 300s weren't available 
<clears throat> your fuel capacity is 100 gallons. Uh, and just keep in mind all of these new uh, diurnal venting systems, uh, EPA mandated, uh, are about 10% less than what their posted capacity is. So this boat will actually have a 90 gallon usable capacity and that Curvel will have about a 270 gallon usable capacity when you're planning your trips and your ranges. So this is actually our most popular um, boat that we sell volume wise just because it does a lot of stuff. MSRP on this one, by the way, 104.480. As always, check with your local dealers. We offer discounts to our local clients and most dealers do as well. Uh, just depends on inventory levels and all that good stuff. Uh, ski toe is another option we installed. We have cushions all the way across the back here. Uh, storage in each corner. There's actually a raw water pump in there. Uh, live well in here. You can see this is the only dedicated live well. So again, this is more family friendly cruising boat that also fishes where you could see on that Curvel, even though they had a lot of cool family features on the boat, a lot of bells and whistles. Uh, they still had two pressurized live wells and a forward bait well. Um, and again, semantically speaking, live well, bait well, kind of the same purpose. Uh, cooler on this one, pulls out, giant cockpit, a lot of space. This You do have some options on this one to do like a live well in the leaning post here. Not a very popular option for this boat because most of the people that uh, end up buying this aren't hardcore fishermen. And then you can also do a convenience center back here that has a sink and then a cooler in that, but it takes up even more of your cockpit space. <clears throat> Moving into the helm, you can see the finishes on this. It's a very nicely finished boat for what you get or you know for what you're spending um you have fold down bolsters armrest was an addition uh, it is a mechanical throttle hydraulic steering with power assist you know all your switching is done here instead of integrated into the garmin we have a single garmin with yamaha gauges just your lcd screen fusion stereo six speakers um battery switch is standard on this model and then <clears throat> gunnel height again pretty good uh not quite like what you're getting on the curvel uh, again intended to be offshore this one's kind of meant to be offshore but mostly an inshore river boat um, so the gunnel height isn't quite as aggressive and gunnel height uh, freeboard is how people refer to it so how much height you have here uh, walking around but you still you know kids uh, this hits me in a, about the upper thigh and again i'm five seven whereas that Corvell was hitting me at the waist, which is about another six or seven inches above where this boat's hitting me. And then I don't know if you can see in the in the video, but the Corvell walls were straight up and down. Um, these have a little bit of a curve to them because you know the, the whole thickness isn't quite as much. There's not as much room there. So you're having to follow the outside of the boat um, inside the boat. So it kind of takes up some of your room walking forward. But again, the beam of the Corvell, a lot more substantial. So it gives you that room and then walking forward. We also optioned this boat with uh, the full bow table. It also functions as a filler for a big platform, raises to a table, or we can put cushions on all that so you have a big cushioned area. Backrest plug in here so you can use it like a uh, bow rider. Uh, the 239 does have a macerated fish box, which is very nice because the smaller models, 219s, 203s do not. Um, but you can see how it compares to just those two big macerated fish boxes on the Corvell. Uh, you know, we have a small cooler space here storage under the seats uh, the build philosophy of the boats is also different again the Curvel is more of a traditional build uh, hull stringer deck whereas this one is a hull stringer deck but this one is foam filled so they use a, a structural foam to give them their rigidity where the Curvel uses fiberglass and resin which is another reason for the weight disparity between the two but on this boat you still have a nice big hard top storage up there and again it's you know msrp wise a fifth the price of that curvel so find your intention find the boat that works for you if you can check about 75 percent of the boxes of what you want to do on a boat usually that's a winner um it, it, there's no perfect boat out there so now we'll take a look at the uh 230 bay reef over there kind of see how that stacks up All right so 230 bay reef this boat 23 feet one inches eight foot six in the beam so same beam as what you had on the 239 over here but just that quick comparison i don't know if you can really get zoomed in there and see the dead rise on that boat and then compare it to this one how flat this boat is but you almost have a progressive dead rise on this boat where it you know they try to keep it as flat as possible so it drafts less water so you can really get back in the skinny water and do some fishing but you see how it flattens out you got dead rise here flattens out dead rise there and then it flattens out in the end and it actually puts a little bit of a hook in the hull so that functions uh to keep the bow down a little bit especially when you're planing 
Um, a lot of the times you'll see people, if they want to get more top speed, they'll actually start removing some of that hook to speed the boat up a little bit. So you can get the bow out of the water, uh, run it up on the pad a little bit more. And then we'll take a look. And uh, another important thing, we were talking about freeboard or gunnel height. And I don't know why we pronounce it gunnel. Maybe it's just a southern thing. I don't know. Tell me if anybody up north pronounces it gunnel. But it's spelled G-U-N-W-A-L-E. So gun whale. But uh, say it fast and it sounds like gunnel. I don't know. Height-wise, so you can see how small that is. And it's intentional because being a bay boat, they understand you're probably going to be in backwater more often. And this reduces the windage of the boat where... <laughs> Unfortunately, the hard top kind of puts it back in the boat. But if you have a crosswind, uh, the profile of the boat is lower. The freeboard is lower. Gunnel height is lower. All saying the same thing in a different way compared to the 239 FS. You can see how much more proud that hull side is, how much taller it is, how much freeboard it has in it, and then comparing it to this one. But, I mean, this is a really nice running boat. Really well designed. You know, it still has an aggressive entry in the front, so it, it's really made to be running in a bay where you have that close period wind swell and then the bow really cuts through and takes care of it you still have these almost longitudinal lifting strikes instead of being a little bit more perpendicular to the hull uh, so you know they don't lift quite as much but that engine it really does a nice job of pushing this boat because it's only 2200 pounds before engine uh, and the dead rise at the back is they're, they're claiming it's 19 degrees but it might be those angled sections and you know those flat sections are pretty flat but you still have a reverse chine running pretty much from the front all the way to the back and it actually has a pretty good angle of, of deflection which is why i was saying these boats run really well they, they they hold the water you know you don't get really much chine walk out of them and then you can see the sheer line of the boat how it really progressive quickly gives it that nice aggressive look uh, which i really enjoy in a bay boat uh, and then we usually option this one with the uh, 250 SHO, uh, VF250 LA, I believe, because it's a 20-inch shaft, so we use a 10-inch jack plate to get the motor back so we have uh, we can get a little bit lower in the water. And it does get up on plane with the engine all the way up on the jack plate, but having uh, a low water pickup on it is nice. Uh, bad part about this is you can't run rabbit ears on this uh, to run the engine, so you just have to use the flush port on the engine itself. But uh, I go off on tangents. So once you get it up and running with the engine all the way up in skinny water, you do have to get that jack plate back down because this will aerate and it will start sucking air and can overheat quite quickly as a couple of my customers know that own this boat. But it runs great with that engine. You can see uh, standard with trim tabs. It's a custom welded trailer to fit this boat so it sits nice and low in the trailer, easy to trailer. Oh, MSRP on this one too. Um, $92,005 with the options we put on it. Oh, so let's get into the boat. So casting decks. Inshore fishing, this is great. Good sight lines. Uh, looking for fish in the water. And then you have that giant casting deck up front. And you can see almost no gunnel height past the deck. Uh, we do have a bow cushion kit that we're going to put on this. And then the cushions actually are so big that they go over the, the uh, gunnel side, the lip a little bit. So it's not something you're gonna to wanna to sit up there while you're running the boat. And then on the boat, same <clears throat> premium leaning posts with armrests, flip down bolsters, same cooler with slide out. Um, you don't have that aft bench seat, so it's not quite as family friendly. So again, the intention of this boat is more fishable, whereas the other one is more, you know, sandbar crews and that kind of stuff. But we do still have cushions that we can pop in back here. Big live well, battery storage, which, you know, you would hope they would account for the weight of the batteries and stuff being back here by putting more flotation or, you know, counterweighting it somewhere. But like I said, the boat runs really well, so I'm sure they did account for that. People are smarter than I am. Big live well, storage back there. And this storage container actually does go up underneath the seat forward of it, a uh, raw water pump. Oh, there you go. You can see the foam filling. So it's the, you know, almost looks like the great stuff foam you can get at Home Depot. It's not, it's a closed cell. So it, it does provide a lot of structure, which reduces a lot of the water slapping against the hull, which then transmits vibrations through the boat. So other brands, Sportsman, uh, other uh, that I won't mention, don't do that. And the hulls have a lot of flex to them. So like they're 25 open or so I've heard and experienced. 
<clears throat> as you're using it, the whole sides actually you can you can see them move and almost flex where because they foam fill these like three quarters of the way up the gunnel they don't do that so i'm not saying anything's better or worse it's just a preference i sell these boats of course i'm gonna be a little bit biased towards these most of the boats made nowadays um work well as long as you use them for their intended purpose don't buy something like this bay boat and want to be in the ocean all the time i mean the gunnel hits me below the knee so it's probably 11 inches tall 12 13 maybe um, and it gets a little bit taller as you go forward on the boat but not much and you can see that bulkhead there with the speaker in it um, so kids you know i never really like bringing my kids when they're younger on a bay boat just because they don't have to work as hard to get out of the boat as they do on the uh higher gunnel center console boats 12 inch garmin yamaha 6y8 gauge 6yc whatever i forget what they're called they discontinued it anyway uh, fusion deck again mechanical throttle hydraulic power assist steering actually i don't think we did power assist on this one so it's just hydraulic steering jack plate controller um again a lot of fishing oriented features versus family cruising features we did put the hard top we usually do it on this boat um just because price point wise it's gorgeous and it doesn't cost a lot more than just a regular t-top uh, still plenty of room in the head which is surprising that the uh floor is that low on such a low draft boat and then uh, room for the batteries there trolling motor excuse me trolling motor plug is pre-rigged into this compartment and then there's a plug in the anchor locker forward to hook that up and that's probably the biggest detriment of a foam fill boat is then if you know if we were trying to rig something after the fact getting it from like the helm to the transom or the helm to the bow becomes nearly impossible unless the rig tube has enough room to run the cords cables hoses all that good stuff again cooler seat freshwater fill freshwater tank is underneath here i think it's eight gallons and then you do have floor storage on this one for a five gallon bucket specifically or you know cast net storage does most of the boxes on the key west drain into the bilge as with most of the boats in this price point in this category uh rod storage again drains into the bilge so try not to put anything in the boxes that you don't want getting in the bilge we do have another live well slash bait well up front here so you can have somebody fish in front fishing back or you can use them for cooler space because those do drain overboard so the storage on this boat is actually pretty good hopefully i'm just ruin the camera uh another bucket storage open storage anchor locker there's that trolling motor plug so it makes it easier to rig but just your plain center console and so is that one and so is that regulator 26. so kind of narrow down what you're looking for it'll help steer you in the right direction um and then we can have a better conversation about what we can do for you but if you have any other questions about the Crevel 33 csf the key west 239 fs the key west bay reef 230 or any other boats we carry call brad or barton 904-644-7631 or get us on the website yamaha marine jax.com ymcjax.com and uh Hopefully our big, beautiful showroom will be up over here, finished shortly.